Thank you, Dr. Kim, and thanks for everybody who chose C on that question. Uh, my name is Danny Issa. I'm uh, going to talk about EOS guided ablation therapies for pancreas lesions. So over the next 15 minutes, we will discuss the role of EOS for pancreas diseases. We will talk about uh, EOS ablation therapies. Uh, we will start by discussing chemical ablation, then focus on RFA ablation, and talk about some new modalities that we use and some areas for future research. EOS has an essential role in the diagnosis and management of pancreatic, pancreatic lesions in general. Pancreatic cysts are very common. Um, and in fact, a recent study uh, by our group looked at patients who underwent MRI and showed that nearly 22% of those patients have pancreatic cysts, uh, which, was, which is significantly higher than previously estimated. And for patients who are 80 years or older, 50% of those patients have pancreatic cysts. EOS is very helpful in clarifying what type of cyst we deal with. For example, when we aspirate the fluids and send it for uh, CAA amylase, glucose, and cytology, it helps us to clarify if this cyst is mucinous versus non-mucinous. If CAA is elevated and glucose is low, usually we're dealing with a mucinous cyst, which is pre-malignant, and those require further surveillance and further management, as Dr. Mudassami alluded to in the previous presentation. EOS is also very helpful in solid pancreatic lesions. It helps differentiating between benign and malignant <coughs> with a very high uh, specificity and significant high, significantly high sensitivity as well. Um, you know, it's considered the standard of practice for patients with pancreatic masses um, nowadays. So let's talk about EOS guided therapies for pancreatic lesions. We will start with alcohol injection or ablation for pancreatic lesions. Um, initially, the use of uh, uh, Ethanol or alcohol injection for normal pancreas was first studied in uh, animal studies in pigs. Then subsequently, studies looked at uh, the use in human, and uh, a lot of uh, case reports and the short-term um, uh, studies were um, reported. So we'll start discuss some of those. Jorgensen and colleagues published the first case report of uh, a 30 millimeter insulinoma, which underwent EOS guided ablation using 95% concentrated alcohol which led to complete resolution on follow-up of this cyst. The patient had some mild pancreatitis that resolved later. Another study looked at 11 patients who were poor surgical candidates uh, with 14 neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas, and alcohol injection was used for those cysts between 0.5 to 3.8 ml with a response rate of nearly 54%. As well, three out of those patients and, um, had developed pancreatitis, which was mild and self-resolving. Similar study looked at 35 patients with pancreatic cysts, and alcohol injection was used to ablate those cysts. In this study, they increased the concentration throughout the course of the study, and eventually followed those patients with uh, imaging. And 35% of those patients had complete resolution. Um, five patients, however, underwent surgical resection at the end um, due to non-resolution of the cysts. So the majority of the um, studies that looked at EOS-guided ethanol injection reached similar conclusions. It's feasible, it's pretty safe technique, it can be used uh, with minimal risk. Uh, however, it has a modest benefit only, and uh, a lot of the cysts either recur or come back or don't you know, uh, achieve complete resolution with ethanol injection. Now let us switch gears and talk about EOS-guided RFA for pancreas lesions. Um, RFA uses heat to cause uh, tissue injury um, by inducing focal hyperthermia, which leads to tumor, um, altering tumor microenvironment, and subsequently this leads to tissue injury by uh, causing this uh, heat damage at the membrane and subcellular level. Um, multiple areas um, have used RFA, for example, uh, it's commonly used for uh, AFib and cardiac arrhythmias, uh, chronic back pain, and uh, ablation for uh, nerves, sometimes arthritis pain, in addition to local treatments for uh, specific cancers like HCC, renal cancers, and others. Within GI, we're also very familiar with RFA. We use it, uh, we have a lot of experience using RFA for Barrett's esophagus and dysplasia, uh, and uh, different catheters of different sizes and shapes are now available. Uh, for example, we have a 360 degrees uh, ablation balloon that can be used in addition to focal catheters uh, to ablate uh, areas of dysplastic Barrett's in the lower esophagus. 
Recently, um, um, endobiliary um, catheters have been developed. The Habib catheter is a single-use, eight-French catheter that can be used during ERCP uh, for the ablation of malignant biliary strictures. And uh, it can provide seven to 10 watts of uh, energy. And uh, we, we uh, also have this uh, available at UCLA and can be used for some uh, certain selected patients who are non-surgical candidates and have malignant biliary obstructions. The depth of injury with RFA is approximately 500 micrometers in the esophagus and some other area of the luminal GI tract. Usually the temperature we use is between 60 and 100 degrees of Celsius. And higher temperatures, more than 100 degrees, is less effective, basically because it leads to water vapor and uh, that usually causes uh, the tissue impedance to go up and decreases response to uh, uh, RFA. One limitation for RFA is uh, something called the uh, heat sink effect, which means that when you use RFA, the vasculature around the uh, tumor uh, you know, uh, is injured and then the tissue around it becomes less responsive to your treatment. There are, two, there are a few devices, but I will focus on, main, on two main devices available for EUS-guided RFA. Um, and the first device is um, EUS RFA catheter. That's very thin, one French uh, in diameter. This catheter has an insulated sheet and comes with uh, one to two centimeters uncoated electrodes at the tip of the catheter, catheter which makes for the effective part of the catheter. Um, this caster is used uh, through FNA needles, so here are the steps for the technique. Uh, basically, we start with uh, EOS guidance. We uh, insert a 19 or 22 gauge needle to the targeted lesion. If it's a cyst, we aspirate the cyst first, and then we position the tip of the needle at the far end of the uh, lesion. Uh, the stylet is removed and then we gently push the RFA catheter uh, through the needle. And uh, what we do is we withdraw the needle a little bit, so we call that disengagement while we maintain the RFA probe within the lesion and then we start the ablation. Another device is available is a dedicated EUS RFA needle, which, uh, which, is, which has an electrode at the end of the tip of the needle, which, uh, which can be used to deliver coagulation directly to the targeted lesion. Uh, this is a video uh, of how to use this technique, uh, and this is an 82-year-old woman with a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. And you, as you see, the echogenic tip of the needle is uh, easily seen under EOS, and then ablation starts, uh, and 30 watts was delivered on continuous mode up to 20 seconds, which achieves, in this case, 14 by 8 millimeter uh, ablation field around the lesion uh, that you can see under EOS. Uh, and then the, the needle is withdrawn and another area is targeted uh, for ablation. Let's review some data on uh, RFA of pancreatic lesions. This study looked at 18 patients with neuroendocrine tumors and with a mean diameter of 14.3 millimeters. The technical success was defined by achieving um, the expected post-ablation effect on follow-up follow imaging that was um, uh, done one day after the uh, intervention. And all patients with insulinomas had complete resolution on a mean follow-up of uh, approximately nine months after the intervention. Uh, no major adverse events were reported in this study. Another study looked at uh, eight patients, cyst patients with pancreas cyst and two patients with neuroendocrine tumors and uh, who underwent US uh, RFA and followed up for three to six months. Two patients with cyst had complete resolution. Uh, there was a significant decrease in the tumor size but, uh, in 50% of patients and two patients uh, developed pancreatitis which resolved quickly after a few days. Another study, which was a multicenter prospective, looked at neuroendocrine tumors uh, and pancreas cyst. This study included uh, a one-year follow-up, 12 patients with neuroendocrine tumors, uh, and uh, 12 tumors had resolved, which uh, corresponded to 86% uh, success rate. As for the cyst, 17, 17 of those patients had pancreatic cyst, and uh, there was approximately 71% significant response uh, on one year follow-up. However, this study showed one patient, that one patient developed uh, perforation of the small bowel after the RFA, and after that they modified the protocol of the study a little bit and, the, uh, and there was uh, less side effects following that. Moving on to pancreas cancer, uh, which uh, was also studied, few studies available to uh, report on RFA for pancreas cancer. Uh, for example, this study um, a few years ago now uh, looked at 50 locally advanced cancer and used ultrasound-guided RFA during laparotomy. The main outcome was 
the safety and tolerability of this technique. 24% of patients developed complications, which included um, pancreas fistulas in two patients and uh, portal vein thrombosis in four patients. And they realized that uh, the higher temperature, the more side effects. So it was a temperature dependent. And when they decreased temperature from 105 to 90 uh, degrees, there was a significant improvement in the rate of uh, adverse events on, on those patients. Another study looked at using RFA before conventional therapy and divided patients into two groups. However, they found that patients who underwent RFA followed by conventional therapy had better outcomes, better long-term survival compared to RFA alone uh, for locally advanced therapy. So RFA by itself is not going to be, uh, maybe, but we don't know, but it's not, probably it's not going to be uh, effective as uh, compared to combining it with conventional therapy. Uh, another study looked at 10 patients with, un with unresectable non-metastatic cancer, and this was a relatively newer study. Different technique. Uh, now, this study showed significant improvement in the tumor size um, and relatively safe, no major adverse events were uh, developed in this study. Now, let's talk briefly about some newer techniques with uh, using EUS-FNI, which is basically direct injection of uh, cytotoxics into the tumor. Pancreas cancer is known to be uh, to have a significant desmoplastic effect, and some, one reason why chemotherapy might not be as effective for pancreatic cancer uh, is because the, the chemotherapy systematically may not reach the cancer as much as you would like it to do. So EUS-FNI might help in directly delivering um, the, uh, tar the, the, the treatment to the targeted lesion. Now, this study looked at 36 patients with pancreatic cancer who had different stages and all underwent EUS guided FNI of gemcitabine, 38 milligrams per ml, and before, before going uh, and conventional therapy. And they assessed the spread of uh, the injectate uh, on a scale from one to four. And they realized that the more spread the injectate was, the higher or the better survival. So if you're able to achieve better injection, you, you, your survival might get better. And also 20% of patients who had stage three cancer were downstaged and underwent eventually R0 resection um, at the end of the study. So this concluded that EOS, FNI, or germcitabine is feasible, safe, and might have some benefit in certain patients. Another multicenter study, which UCLA was part of as well, looked at 50 patients with locally advanced pancreas cancer and used either EOS-guided or CT scan-guided uh, injection of TNF arate, which is a replication-deficient uh, adenoviral vector that delivers um, at TNF alpha, which was done weekly for five weeks. And then those patients were followed. And they, they found that those limiting toxicity was developed in four out of five patients. But if patients were able to tolerate the injection, um, there was some benefit as eventually seven patients underwent uh, resection and six of them had um, uh, R0. And four out of five patients who tolerate maximum dose also had uh, R0 resection at the end of the study. So there is a potential benefit there. Now, this area and this space is, is relatively new and definitely exciting. There is a lot to, uh, you know, to study there and to look into um, EUS guided injection of uh, TVAC, oncolytic viruses, uh, or H genetically modified HSV1, or even immunotherapy, just to name a few, are some areas which will be targeted uh, by research um, in the next uh, few years. Um, now, ha sa having said that, we need to keep in mind the uh, potential adverse events of this technique, and that ranges from mild abdominal pain to hyperamylazemia to acute pancreatitis, clinical acute pancreatitis, infection, and perforation. And there are a few things we can do to prevent those techniques. Indocin rectally, as we use for ERCP, has been uh, looked at, and it helps in preventing post pancreatitis in the small studies that was, that was reported, uh, peri-op, IV fluids, and hydration, antibiotics. Using dextrose infusion is helpful for insulinoma, and also, as a general rule, staying about five millimeter away from the pancreatic duct might be uh, a, a good practice. Uh, but yet, still, this, te this technique, EUS injection, is, seems to be safe, and it's helpful because it allows for direct, direct delivery and as well as real-time assessment of treatment effect. And EOS is the best method we have to visualize the structures around the pancreas and the arteries and the ducts and avoid any uh, unnecessary injuries. So in, in conclusion, EOS-guided um, ablation therapies for pancreas lesions is an emerging modality uh, that seems to be safe and has um, a high technical success rate. 
Ablation therapies may have a role in pancreas cyst and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, especially RFA. However, uh, current small heterogenic studies uh, made it a little bit difficult in standardizing the technique for RFA, uh, and we don't know the long-term benefits, the improvement in quality of life, and the improvement in survival. And that's why we need large-scale randomized control trials to look into this and to assess the long-term benefits of EUS, EUS-guided ablations for pancreas lesions. Thank you.